Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to be learning about mobile design. Now, the reason why is because it's so important, especially if you're building a responsive product, if you're kind of just building a mobile based product, so much what we're doing right now, we're building a mobile app for our client habitual. So I want to take you through the best practices for actually creating mobile design. Now we all know one thing and the difference between a good app and a bad app is the quality of its experience. Now, if we think about it, many of us use our phone for a large portion of the day. I know like my phone is kind of, you know, replaced my laptop in many ways, and it's never been more important to design a very good mobile experience. You know, mobile users expect a lot from an app, whether that be like delight from, you know, interactions like this, or, you know, fast loading times, like how this kind of loaded as well, to just general ease of use, you know, just the clarity of like this mobile design over here and just how easy it is just to use. I mean, all these different things make a great user experience. So let me jump right into those best practices. You know, <laughs> number one practices don't make users think. I mean, that seems pretty standard, but I mean, a lot of people kind of forget that. We don't want to make users think too much. Your product should really strive to, you know, be easy to understand and use. If your app is too hard to use or understand, you really risk users walking away from your product. So step one would be to declutter. I mean, cut away all the unnecessary content is kind of like that one way to create good design. I mean, this doesn't necessarily mean it's just for mobile. I mean, you can do this for desktop as well, but keep things really simple. Don't just smack a whole bunch of copy on the screen. I mean, find ways to hide that or show that, but don't just make your screen incredibly cluttered. You know, every extra button or image or paragraph makes your interface seem cluttered. And because we don't have the screen real estate, I mean, we also need to keep interface elements to a minimum. We want to keep our design simple. You can also practice actually hiding different things under interactions like this. So that content is hidden and it's kind of not cluttering the main homepage. What you also want to do is to break tasks up. I mean, if you have like a form similar to this, you want to kind of break that process up, especially for mobile, because I mean, we just don't have the screen real estate. This is really important, especially because if a flow consists of some sort of logically connected step, the user can easily use it. Another best practice is just to stick to the patterns. I mean, think about the types of patterns that we normally see on mobile. One being something like onboarding screens, stick to those patterns that have kind of been proven and just keep on using them, similar to what we covered in design patterns. Also reuse the elements and screens that users are used to that really decreases like the learning curve. So like home screens are an example, settings screens. Those are different types of screens that we all kind of see in a lot of different apps. And it really helps us understand how to use apps if we see similar screens over and over again. Over here, we kind of have like a product description screen for a product and just kind of like a very simple e-commerce layout. And this is kind of all very standard. You want to minimize your user's input. So, I mean, no long forms. Like over here, we don't have a very long form. There's just a couple of options and they've also broken it up. It looks like in different steps, you know, typing on mobile is never really a fun experience. And, you know, we're often prone to errors and, you know, we can really make this process easy by creating forms as short as possible. Like I mentioned before, but also removing unnecessary fields are very key pre format uh, certain fields. Like this is a phone number. And it really helps to see it pre-formatted just because, I mean, if I want to review that content, you know, I can notice the errors right away, especially for things like even credit cards. This is an example of like a credit card that is pre-formatted as well. And another thing to do is like, you know, autocomplete were necessary. I mean, this could be applicable to things like addresses, like over here. This really allows users to enter their address without necessarily having to enter the entire address. And you should also think about validating your inputs dynamically. So when users do create an error, they don't necessarily need to go back and go through that interaction all over again. They can just correct it while they're actually focused on the input. Next is consistency. Now, 
This is a fundamental principle of design and it really eliminates a lot of confusion. It is essential. Like visual consistency, like typeface, buttons, labels, color. It could mean like functional consistency, interactive elements across the app work similarly. So that could be like buttons will move you in a certain way or swiping can move you to a new page or the navigation is very consistent. I mean, we're thinking about all these different things, even platform guidelines like iOS and Android design systems, like using that, like if you have two separate apps for both, I mean, you don't need to do that, but say if you're creating an application for Android phones, you kind of want to stick to Google's material design for a lot of those different types of design patterns, because usually users are more familiar with that in comparison to something like on uh, iOS, where those design systems are really different. Next, you want to give users as much control or the illusion of control. So this can mean like just understanding where things are going, understanding how things work. And that's just overall predictability. You know, all interactive elements should be familiar and predictable when things work in the way you just predict. And they kind of sense that feeling of control. So on mobile, we don't necessarily only have one way of interacting with an element to understand the type of feedback that it'll introduce. So if we stick to familiar patterns, our users will really understand how our system works already. So, I mean, if we notice that like we have cards, that's a big example of like a pattern, just cards in general, we, we know we can kind of tap them. Like in this case too, they're very faint, but we know that I can probably just tap on that and it's very familiar to me. And the way that input is, I know that this is like a a menu of some sort. So, I mean, introducing that sense of predictability really makes your application much more easier to use. Now we're going to stop here and we're going to pick up on navigation when we come back.